Senior Technical Artist at Montana. I hope everyone's having a great day so far. Today, we're going to be going over how we export our asset from Maya, bring it into uh, Ventana, and then import it into Unreal using the Ventana plugin. Okay, let's dive in. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have the Babylon plugin installed in our version of Maya. This is going to allow us to export as a GLP. So to do that, I recommend checking out the Maya resources section, uh, the Maya section on the Ventana resources page. Uh, at the very top of the page, you'll see a link to the uh, Babylon JS exporter. This is going to be what we want to install um, in, uh, in, into Maya. So if you just come over here, download the zip folder, extract it, uh, or run the executable, uh, it'll guide you through installing uh, that to your version of Maya. After you've installed it to your version of Maya, we need to make sure that we've enabled the plugin by going to Windows, Settings and Preferences, and then Plugin Manager. And then at the top, we just need to search for Babylon, uh, and that'll bring and, uh, that'll pull it right up. And then we need to make sure that it's loaded, uh, and then enable Auto Load so that every time you open Maya, it'll auto load this plugin. After we've done that, we can close the plugin page, and now we can start looking at our asset. So the first thing that I like to do uh, is just get the mesh prep out of the way. So this is going to be the initial stuff that we do for any export, uh, and that's going to be freeze transformations and then delete all history. So to do that, I want to select all my mesh components, and a really easy way to do that is just I'm going to come up to my, my selection filter settings, and I'm just going to unclick everything that isn't a polygon. So that means if I do a marquee selection, I'm only going to select uh, the polygon objects in my scene. And from there, I can go to Modify, uh, Freeze Transforms, and I can go to Edit, Delete All by Type History. Perfect. Now that that's taken care of, we can go look at our materials. So we're going to select our asset, and we're going to open up the Hypershade. And then I'm just going to go to Graph, Graph Material on Selected, and you can see we have our material. Now, the Babylon exporter prefers that we have our materials using either the Stingray material the uh, Maya standard surface material or the Arnold standard surface material. We're using the Maya standard surface material. Another thing to note is that after you export for the first time using the Babylon exporter, it's going to create a node uh, called Babylon AI standard surface material node. This just, this just holds some extra settings uh, for our materials like our transparency mode and whether or not to enable backface culling. This is going to be really important, especially if we have some transparent materials. So if we do, I like to export the asset twice with the initial export, getting all of the Babylon standard surface materials added, and then the second export going back and editing uh, some of the transparent settings to make sure that our assets come out right. So for this, we don't need to change anything since it's a standard opaque material. Um, uh, and then we can take a look at our textures. So we have uh, we have a, a generic uh, diffuse color texture where we have our out color going into our base color. And then we have a simple simple ORM, uh, which is occlusion uh, in, our, in our red channel, uh, roughness in our green, and then metallic in our blue. And we're only using the metalness value, and we're plugging that directly into our metallic slot in our Maya standard material. Uh, let's go take a look at something a little bit more complex. So I, I'm going to open up, I'm going to display the glass. So I'll go to graph, graph material unselected. Now you can see we have a little bit more of a complex material here. Uh, we have our alpha plugging into our opacity, and then we also have, uh, we're using our roughness channel uh, as well. And our, so the green channel is getting plugged to our speculative roughness, and our B is getting applied to our metallic. Now, uh, uh, now since this material is transparent, we need to make sure that our uh, Babylon standard surface material nodes are set correctly. Um, so that just means we need, to, since this is glass, I'm changing the transparency mode to blend, and I'm going to turn off back face culling. This will just allow us to see the material properties on both sides, uh, or see the material on both sides of the polygon, uh, the polygon plane. Um, and then, yeah, we should be good to go for our materials. So now we're ready to export. I'm just going to select everything, come up here to Babylon, Babylon File Exporter, and this is going to bring up our export options. So uh, here we need to change uh, the output format to GLB. This is where we can def set a destination for our file. Hit enter, and, and now we can uh, set some of the settings. By default, the settings are, are, are perfect. Uh, we can leave them as is. Uh, I know we have uh, texture transforms uh, in our assets, so we need to make sure we enable texture transforms for this asset, so that will be enabled. If 
if your asset has texture transforms and you don't enable this, you will see errors in your output log telling you that you should enable KHR texture transforms so that those texture transforms will be preserved. Uh, this all looks good, so we'll click export and that'll begin the export process. So now, uh, while that's exporting, we're gonna jump over the platform real quick. Um, and as you can see, we're on platform, we're gonna add a project or add a product. So let's click add product. I'm gonna go over to where uh, we were exporting that car. I'm just gonna drag it into our scene or into <laughs> onto platform uh, and we can dive into the optimization settings. Um, so first off, this is the name of the asset. Uh, it's going to pull directly from the file name. Um, and then the, the pipeline, and these are just some presets that, that we run depending upon where the asset came from. Since we're coming from Maya, we're, we're going to select other. Uh, now we get to dive into the geometry optimization portion of the settings. So the overall flag is whether or not we want to enable geometry optimization or not. Uh, and then moving on, we have the first flag is remove obstructor geometry. This just it does a check on all uh, polygon faces to see if it if they are if they can be visible and if they are, uh, then uh, it leaves them. But if they can't be visible, we're going to delete those faces. Uh, next up is the polygon limit. So our optimization is really awesome and it really tries to hit our the, the polygon count that you put in. But it's got a lot of safeguards in place um, to help preserve mesh fidelity. Uh, and so which leads me to the next. Uh, setting on our on our optimization is the force polygon limit so while whatever while the optimizer will try to hit whatever polygon limit you input for this uh, for the polygon limit if sometimes it's just unable to since uh, the mesh fidelity could suffer as a result uh, so it may not be able to hit uh, that goal if you absolutely want it to hit that goal and you do not care about how uh, about the visual fidelity of the mesh then uh, we can turn you can enable force polygon limit and that just takes off those safeguards that we've put in place. Uh, moving on to Draco compression, this is another compression uh, tool that we use to help drive down the file size. It's not recommended for real-time applications, so if you're going to be using it in Unreal or Unity or using Virtual Tryon, we want to disable that, so we'll turn that off. Uh, texture compression is really awesome. Uh, again, this is just a global setting for texture compression, and then moving on to KTX texture compression. This is really only required if you're seeing uh, textures loading in slowly on mobile uh, and it, it is lossy so uh, we recommend using it only when it's required. Uh, bank ambient occlusion is a really nice feature on platform that allows us to bake a, uh, an object level ambient occlusion into our materials uh, which always makes the, the, the assets look better. Um, and then our max resolution that goes through all of the textures associated with our materials and it'll make sure that uh, they, they're no bigger than 2k. Um, and then our aggression level is how aggressive our um, texture optimizer is. And at level three, we find it's pretty good. Um, so, and then 3D model scaling and pivot point adjustment, we can change the size of our model on upload and we can even uh, assign the pivot point or change, do some edits to the pivot point. Uh, the, the, that, it's perfect for us the way it is. So we're just going to uh, leave it. We're gonna create uh, and then live internal. And this is going to upload the asset and then allow us to pull it from Unreal uh, when it's done processing. So uh, we're going to jump over to the Unreal part of the of this real quick. So to start with, we need to make sure that we have the Unreal plugin installed. So I'm going to jump over to the Epic Games Launcher, and I'm going to jump over to the Epic Games Market or the Unreal Marketplace, and I'm going to search for Ventana in our search bar. It should be the first thing that pops up. And this brings us to the Ventana plugin page of the Unreal pipeline or of the, of the Unreal uh, store. Uh, and we support versions 5.0 and 5.1. And so you, we just need to click install to engine. And this is going to allow us to select a version that we want to install to. Uh, we can uh, add the plugin to 5.0 uh, or 5.1. I've already installed it to 5.1, which is why I can't select it. Uh, you would click install. I'm going to click cancel. Uh, after it's downloaded and installed, we can come over to our Unreal library and check out the installed plugins. You should see the Ventana uh, uh, plugin installed on your version of Unreal. Now we just need to open up a project that supports that. Uh, I have a project here. So after we've opened up our project, uh, we need to end downloaded and installed the Ventana plugin. We need to come over to edit plugins and make sure that the plugin is enabled. So I'm going to search for Ventana. 
now we just need to make sure that it's enabled. It, it won't be the first time you uh, open your project, so you'll have to enable it. This will prompt you to restart the editor. After you restart the editor, you should see this blue V icon above your display port. Uh, clicking that will open up the Ventana plugin, <laughs> plugin prompting you to log in uh, with your Ventana platform credential. After you've successfully logged in, your uh, screen will look a little bit differently than mine, depending on how your, your organization is set up and depending upon your folder structure. Uh, but you can use the folder uh, drop down to navigate your folders on your organization. I'm going to go to where we just uploaded our, our asset. <clears throat> and so now I'm going to select uh, the asset. We have some optimization statistics. Uh, we can see that the original size was 115.8 megabytes. Uh, we have our original polygon count at about 1.5 million, and you can see we've optimized it down to 7.2, and the poly count to about 156,000 polys, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so we're gonna click Download GLB, and this is gonna download the GLB directly to our content folder uh, in, our, uh, in our Unreal project, and then after it's uh, downloaded, it'll prompt us to import it into our project. So we're gonna click Import. The default uh, settings are perfect, so we're gonna click Import again. And now that our file has been imported into our scene, we can go check it out in our content browser. But before we do that, uh, we, we have some tools that just help us make sure that our, uh, that our GOBs that we import are displaying correctly. So Unreal sometimes doesn't choose the right settings for our normal maps. So that's what this script does is it goes through and runs and fixes everything. So now that we've run the script on the asset, we can close out of the plugin. We can go to Window, uh, Content Browser, now, there we go. Now we can pull our asset over. So you can see that we have a Ventana folder that it created, and we can go check out our asset. So for assets that come in like this uh, within multiple components, I like to put them into a blueprint. This just allows us to, uh, this allows a ton of things. Uh, one, it, it easily stores them, and it allows for uh, allows us to build in functionality like you can change the color and things like that later on. It's just a really good thing to do. So if I right click in my content browser and I click blueprint class and I say actor, this is going to create an actor blueprint. I'm going to name it car. And if I double click on it, that's going to open up uh, my Unreal blueprint. And now I just want to make sure that I've selected all my static mesh components. I'm just going to drag them, drop, drag and drop them into my actor blueprint. As you can see, they're in there. That's looking good. I can click Compile. Now that's done, I can close that, and I can move my content browser down. I can just drag this into my scene. And now our car asset is ready to use uh, in our Unreal project. Hope this helps. Have a good day.